rotate the coping saw blade sideways, you can just cut it off sideways. In fact, maybe uh, I'll do one side with a bandsaw, and I'll do the other side with the coping saw, just so you can see both, both methods. Um, when I pass this through, the highest point will be about here. So I'm going to lower the blade, and as I said, this is a little bit on the sketchy side. So be careful with your hands. I'll put one hand underneath here through, and I'll be pulling it, and this one here I'll have over on this side, raising it up. It'll follow the profile of our, our heel. Side. Sometimes if you're making a guitar that's got a really wide uh, headstock, what you can do is you can take a piece of uh, wood from this portion of the neck and glue it on, and that'll give you wings. And uh, I'm not going to cope saw, but yeah, you can use a coping saw if you want. This is just so much quicker. One thing I was doing the whole way through is I was holding the back portion of the neck flat against this back section of the table just to keep it level. Okay. So the next step, go over to the router, we'll raise it up and we'll set it up so the bottom bearing is going to follow the profile of the uh, fingerboard. And then we'll didn't cut, I can take it off with a chisel or a, a rasp in a bit, but uh, this side I went down, I did not go against the end grain, whereas this side, if I start over here left to right, I will go against the end grain and that can cause trouble. So what I'll do is I'll start off and I'll do little passes going like this. space where the nut is going to be sitting. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put the bearing in because it might make a tiny little bit of a divot. But uh, now I have my neck trued up so it follows the profile of my uh, my fingerboard. Then put it in my neck pocket approximately where it's supposed to sit. And then this is actually a good portion where uh, it's not a bad idea to sand this flat. So I'll walk over to the belt sander. And this is kind of a neat little feature of the belt sander. It's got this table here. I'll take my, uh, my fretboard and have it sitting in this little pocket here. If you've got a longer uh, heel, like on a dreadnought, 
then I'll pull it back over here. That gives me an extra, you know, quarter of an inch, um, so it's further away. And it'll also, the cool thing is to also put a little bit of an angle, which ends up being sort of parallel with the taper of your back. contoured it's a little bit more of an angle but I just think it looks nice and it's a nice easy step um, other ways you can you know sand up the sanding block cut up the chisel uh, so now what I can do is I can easily see my back center which is right here so what I'm gonna do my neck of the pocket I'll have it lined up in the middle and I'll extrapolate that middle mark. So that's the middle of my heel cap right there. And now I get to start uh, carving my heel. So with uh, the heel, it's nice to look at another guitar neck for uh, a reference. So is my Epiphone neck down here or is my Epiphone neck up there? Nice. Yeah, are you? Yeah, here we go. So here's a nice oversized heel, uh, heel cap. Um, you can design your heel caps in the way that you wish them to look, uh, depending on the width of your dovetail and everything. Uh, but uh, this is a pretty good place to start. I'll often make my heel cap roughly this size, and then as I'm carving it, I'll I'll make it a little bit smaller. But uh, Line it up like that if you really want, and you can trace that on. I'm just trying to get a rough idea of what my heel cap is going to look like. And again, it's going to be oversized at this point, so uh, that's one. I like it. And then. I'm going to carve it over there. And I'll take this and take this and put it in the vise. Now, because my fingerboard's on, my truss rod is protected. Take a rasp if you want, you can rasp it in the shape. But what I like to do is start off by following the, uh, the rough profile of this line that I drew before. So I'll take my brass mallet. Outside, I'm going to give myself an extra eighth of an inch. And I'll just 
see because we're a little closer. Sometimes, even if it's a flat saw neck, you can get a nice, nice uh, tear it like this. And then I'm going to start following the profile of the neck. than what you're going to be carving. Bigger. Next we'll probably carve a little bit nicer. But now I've got a very crudely roughed out heel. I want to be careful this portion of the neck is weak. It can easily break. This is also the portion of the tarbling process that you're more likely to, to uh, put your chisel into your hand. So try really hard not to. bit off from the left, a little bit from the right. Evenly taking it off material so I don't have something that's completely lopsided. And again, be careful with the chisel. Make sure it's sharp, make sure your hands are behind. You don't want to go like this. That'll ruin. If your vice isn't tight enough, take the time to tighten it up. downwards with the beveled portion of the chisel down and this section here you can take a pencil and you can mark it off you can also take tape if you want just to play it safe at this point we don't want to touch that portion of the neck we're just working on getting the shape of the heel into play Their quarter song, they'll carve easier than this. Okay, another way of doing it the rasp. If you want, uh, actually, can you pass me that rasp? This one's got a handle on it. Um, some are sharper than others. I just want to grab it. I don't want to feel pain. Don't touch your fretboard.
So now I've got a pretty large and oversized heel. And it's not even totally symmetrical yet, but what I want to do now is go back and grab my body of my guitar. And I'd like to see how, how well it lines up with this. 